Hey everyone, it's Mr. Beast here. Today I'm excited to talk about how artificial intelligence is revolutionizing the creative process. Artificial intelligence has been used to automate creative tasks in a variety of industries, from music composition to visual art. In this video, I'll be exploring how artificial intelligence is being used to generate creative ideas and how it can help creative professionals save time and energy. So sit back, relax, and let's learn about how artificial intelligence is changing the creative landscape. Recently, there has been a massive surge in the development and use of artificial intelligence models for image, text, and audio generation. AI has become popularized to the point that there's a good chance that even your grandmother has heard about it. Some of the things that are possible with AI are shocking. For example, I used OpenAI's Dolly 2 to transform this picture of me in Colorado as a kid into me on the edge of a massive waterfall into a bottomless pit. An obvious area where artificial intelligence has massive potential and has been utilized frequently is in creating generated art. Much of it is extremely creative and interesting, and it has revolutionized the way that we think about art. One of the common ways that it's used is by prompting a model to create a painting or drawing of something in the style of a famous artist. These generations are definitely impressive, but they also raise some much-deserved concerns and potential for controversy. A quick Google search will tell you that these image-generating models are trained from millions of actual existing pictures from real people. This brings up some very interesting questions that artists and creatives should consider when using AI. If the images produced by artificial intelligence are created from existing human-made pictures and art, is it, in a way, plagiarizing or stealing from the original artists? If someone can generate a Picasso painting that looks indistinguishable from the work of Picasso himself, does that devalue the real art? What does this say about creativity? Is creativity a uniquely human trait? Can it be automated? What even is creativity? Well, Creativity can be defined as the ability to create something new or to make something original. It is the ability to come up with ideas, inventions, designs, or works of art that are unique and novel. It involves the use of imagination, critical thinking, and problem solving to generate ideas and solutions that are not already in existence. Or at least that's what the AI GPT-3 thinks that creativity is. GPT-3 also thinks that AI art is definitely not plagiarism or stealing. Recreating an artist's work does not devalue the original, and creativity is not uniquely human. While I am sure that many people have disputes to those answers, I do think that there is a lot of truth to much of what GPT had to say. It says that creativity can be automated, but rather than just take its word for it, I figured that I should test it out for myself. While there are many ways that could be used to test it, I figured that one of the best ways that I could use AI to see if it is capable of being creative is through ideation, rather than its typical use of creating based on human ideas. A use that I decided would be relevant to me is for coming up with robot ideas. I decided to use AI to give me ideas for robots and then actually make them. My first step in doing this was, of course, to generate the ideas. To do this, I decided to use GPT-2. While it might be slightly outdated because of the creation of GPT-3, I am more familiar with using it because of previous projects, and I can train it to be more specific to what I'm looking for. For my training data, I compiled a large list of existing robot ideas that were similar to what I wanted. My first attempt came from an unfiltered scrape of video titles from YouTubers like William Osmond, Michael Reeves, Simone Gertz, and Alan Pan. After playing around with the settings of the generation for a bit and starting with a few different prompts, I had generated thousands of options, but only a few were even usable. Most were absolute nonsense or unrelated thanks to me not sorting through the training data to get rid of video titles that weren't relevant. I made a couple concept descriptions and some pretty poorly drawn sketches for two of my favorites being Arduino-controlled roller skates and Arduino-controlled spoon. But 
I wasn't really happy with the generation as a whole. I then decided to revamp my training data and to try to generate again. I took the existing list of video titles and manually picked through each one, deleting non-relevant lines. I also added a few hundred additional robot creations from Arduino Project Hub and Instructables. With this, I generated again and got far better results. Some of my favorites include Robot That Does My Laundry, Dangerous Toast Buttering Robot, I Built This To Beat People At Call Of Duty, and some of the more nonsensical ones like I Made A Cheese Sandwich. I don't know if there's a better name for it. I'm a chef. I make food. With literal thousands of usable options, I decided that I should attempt to make a few of these rather than just focus on one. I chose Arduino Controlled Spoon for my original generation because of its practical yet easily made concept, and two more from the second generation. Those being, I made a robot arm that does nothing but throw stuff at you, and anti-spam robot. For my first of the three robots, Arduino Controlled Spoon, I already had my horrible concept sketch, which somehow turned out to be almost exactly what I ended up making. I started out by creating a 3D model in Rhino. It consisted of a stable base and a pan tilt servo setup with a spoon holder at a decent height to reach the bowl. With it, I would be able to lower the spoon into the bowl, lift it back up, and turn it toward the user. After reviewing my design, I thought that it looked good and decided to 3D print my 3D modeled parts. After about 12 hours, the prints were done and I started to try to put them together. Before assembling, I needed to ensure that my servos were in a neutral position so they would have enough room to move when put together. I then began building it, but soon discovered a fatal flaw. I messed up the design of the spoon holder and it didn't fit properly to the servo. So I had to do a redesign and 3D print another part. Luckily though, it only took a couple hours and I got the chance to change the spoon holder, which I think looks and functions far better than the original one did. With it all assembled, I now had to create a circuit with a button to turn it on and off and write the code. The circuit was fairly simple and as was the code. The code just took a bit of trial and error with the values to have one servo move down, back up, and have the other turn to the user, wait, and move back to the bowl. After testing, the Arduino controlled spoon was complete. Next, it was time to create the robot that does nothing but throw things at you. I once again started out by making a 3D model in Rhino. I decided to make a circular base with slots for ball bearings to take weight off the servo that turns left and right. It was at this point that I got caught up in a completely different project that was way more complicated and time consuming than anything that I made for this project. I made an animatronic fortune teller machine with a moving head and eye for a student film. It's probably the most complicated thing that I've ever made, so it pretty much consumed all of my time for about a month. After finishing that, I quickly realized that I was running low on time, and I decided to drop the third robot, of which I didn't really have any plans for anyway. Now I was just making Arduino controlled spoon and the robot that does nothing but throw stuff at you. My idea for this robot was to have a catapult controlled by servos that uses face tracking to aim at you. For the catapult mechanism, I found an existing model on Instructables from Avi O and modified it a bit. I changed the side to side movement and base out with my circular design to be more stable and self-contained. I also changed the dispenser part to work with the ball bearings that I was using for the base. With my design complete, I just had to wait about one full day for everything to 3D print before starting the assembly. I ran into a few issues early on, with the servo and the base being an extremely tight fit and all of the screw holes being slightly too large for any of the screws that I had. I made a trip to Home Depot for some bigger screws to mount the catapult to the base, but I soon came across yet another problem. There was not enough clearance on one of the servos to fit the catapult into the base. I really didn't want to redesign and reprint the parts and waste literal days of time, so I came up with an alternative solution. Fire. 
Luckily, PLA, which is the plastic that I used for the 3D printed parts, melts pretty easily. I simply held a lighter over the area that I needed to make an indent and cut some of it out. This took a bit of trial and error, but I eventually got it to work while only burning myself a couple of times. Also, apparently PLA is flammable, which is news to me. It's kind of weird, it burns with these like really tiny flames that you can hardly even see. With a new hole molded into the base, everything finally fit together with the help of some hot glue. With it built, I began to program the catapult. For some reason, I decided to not even look at the code provided by the creator of the catapult design, and I wrote it all from scratch. I was using a servo motor driver that changes how you program the servos, so I figured that it would be better to just make it on my own. But looking back, it would have been helpful to at least reference the original program. I programmed the trigger servo to move over the arm, the pull servo to rotate and stretch the rubber bands, and the trigger servo to rotate back to release. This was fairly simple, but the dispensing mechanism was a bit more troublesome. My redesign of the dispenser was not properly done, so I had to make a paper funnel and a smaller path with hot glue to prevent the balls from getting stuck in the tube. Eventually, the catapult mechanism was fully functional, and all I had left was to create the panning and face tracking. When attempting to figure out the values of the pan servo, I kept having issues with it not functioning fully. I had to completely remove the catapult from the base and replace the servo, which turned out to potentially have some issues in the wires, which is probably from when I squeezed it in. I did some more melting so that I didn't run into the same problem and I put a new servo in its place. It seemed to work fine at that point, but after reassembling, none of my servos were working at all. I replaced the motor driver and that seemed to do the trick. I honestly have no idea what was wrong or if the original servo was even broken, but it worked in the end. For the face tracking code, I used Python and OpenCV to get the position of a face in a webcam frame and move the servo to put it back in the middle of the frame. This took a lot of small changes to get it to work smoothly, but it wasn't too complicated as a whole once I figured it out. I set the catapult to trigger at completely random times, and with that implemented, the robot that does nothing but throw things at you was complete. Now, I guess it's time for my conclusions. I learned a lot throughout the semester long process. The main lesson that I learned is that I need to manage my time a lot better and stop procrastinating so much. But that doesn't really have anything to do with the topic of this video. In terms of artificial intelligence and creativity, honestly, my opinion has swayed a bit. Going in, I thought that creativity could definitely be automated. And honestly, I was hoping to have it do that. The whole reason that I did any of this at all is because I couldn't come up with any robot ideas to save my life and I wanted AI to just do it for me. After the strenuous process of trying to get artificial intelligence to generate ideas that are both interesting and doable, I sort of began to see the other side of things. Sure, AI can throw thousands of ideas at me, but ultimately, I was the one that was the decision maker. And to be honest, most of what it generated was still complete nonsense. Maybe those issues could be attributed to a flawed methodology, but they still revealed the underlying problem with automating creativity. As developed as it is, AI still lacks the nuanced understanding of the world that is unique to human beings. In my opinion, creativity is one of the main things that sets us apart from machines and makes us human. This is not to discredit AI completely though. It is still an extremely valuable tool that should be treated as more of a collaborator in creative ventures. While it can't be truly creative on its own, artificial intelligence can still automate certain creative processes and spark inspiration in us that would not otherwise be possible. Anyways, if you enjoyed the topics that I discussed in this video, or you just want to see me make more dumb robots in the future, 
please be sure to like the video and subscribe. Later.